So information, whether digital or analog, can be carried by means of various channels of communication, wire, satellite, dish, whatever. Name examples of devices where information is carried to the device using a wire pair. Now this one, pay close attention, info to the device using this thing. So I'm talking about the device. Huh? Wire pair, where do we use wire pair? Microphone. Okay, microphone transmit to where? Speaker. Oh, so we say speaker lor. Ne, microphone, wire pair to speaker. That's one example. Or you can also talk about the doorbell. Ding dong, you press button. You can talk about telephone. The old, old school telephone <laughs> also can. Uh, where do we have coaxial? Uh, from where go to? Where are you going to? Your coaxial? To TV. Oh, so you're right there to TV. So the device is TV set because you have a TV. From outside your roof, coaxial will connect to it to send the signal to the TV. How about microwaves? We send microwave to where? I know you can use it for your food, but we're talking about communication. Don't microwave your food. Microwave to the phone or satellite. So this one, you can either talk about either to satellite. We send microwaves to a satellite. Or you can say um, mobile phone also can. Mobile phone do communicate somewhat in the microwave range. So this is anywhere from 2G to 30G gigahertz. Oh, also can. Uh. Mm, so this one, each one will be a B1 mark if you got one correct. Okay, you should know your facts. State two advantages of optic fibers compared with coaxial for long range. So what's good for long range about optic fiber? Optic fiber operates by total internal reflection, right? So if you have an optic fiber cable that looks something like this, light will be sent in, and total internal reflection means you bounce off, ping, boing, ping, boing, ping. It's just like a clear piece of glass, and it's almost magical. You see the light, but it just keeps traveling. So light will just keep traveling, 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 traveling for a very long distance. Uh, oh, it's light. It's not electricity, huh? Hmm... One of the top reasons why fiber optic is used is because there is less noise. Or you can remove the noise pretty easily. Uh, less interference because there's no electricity. It's just light. There's no current, no voltage, just light. Uh, also less attenuation compared to the rest. The other kinds of cables. But it's also very expensive, you know. So fiber optic is not cheap. Uh, also more secure. You cannot simply, simply just listen into the to the cable you cannot say oh i want to use some electromagnetic thing and hack into the signal to see not so easy not so easy two marks for this if you can get any two advantages it's good to make a list of notes lah the pros and cons of each comp each type of wire so go check out the theory video if you haven't or look up the notes on this chapter now let's do a calculation Ooh, this one looks complicated an optic fiber have length 62 km Ooh, very long. An attenuation per unit length of 0 0.2 on A is very small. Eh? Can go quite far. Many, many, many km only decreased by a little bit of power. The input power is P. Receiver noise is 9.2. Oh, I feel like I need to draw. Otherwise, too much information. Okay, okay. Input power at P. Fiber optic. What color shall I use? Fiber optic to the receiver. Okay, noise. Signal to noise ratio is 25 dB. <gasps> oh, this one is signal to noise. So right here, SNR, signal to noise ratio, is 25 dB. So that is comparing the ratio of uh, signal to the noise. Oh, yeah, they just told you signal to noise ratio. What am I saying? Uh, the receiver is 25 dB. Okay, noise power though. Power here we already know, given to us. 9.2 mu watt. And this is for noise. Noise. <laughs> Calculate the ratio of the input power to noise at the receiver. How to find ratio? What is ratio? What do we use? Uh? If you're not sure where to start, let's start off with the attenuation per unit length. Because that's the information we know kind of how to calculate. So let's do this. Okay, let's start with attenuation per unit length because we have 62 km and we have dB. So let's start with that. So let's find the attenuation 
or the ratio in dB. dB. Okay, so we have 0 0.21. This is dB per km. Just reminding myself, if I want to get rid of km, I multiply by how far the distance is, the wire, 62 km. So I will get an attenuation ratio of 13.2. 13.0 actually, dB. And this is a decrease, which tells me from my transmitter, if I send a signal along here, I will lose out 13.0 dB. So whatever I reach there, signal to noise ratio is 25. Here already though. So it's the original. Maybe we can use that to help us a bit. Okay, okay, let's try that out. So we're going to use at P, at P, what is your signal to noise ratio? S and R. I'm lazy to write the whole thing, so we can say, huh, you have some ratio here. S and R. Don't know why is it, but it decreased by 30, then it become 25. Just add law. Oh, okay, okay, we can just add right. Can. So here we can say that your 25 which is your SNR at the receiver, increase by 13, you're going backwards, plus 13. No? This is 38 dB. Ah, so your signal to noise ratio here in the beginning is going to be 38 dB. Kind of like signal with reference to the background noise. And then you, after a certain distance, you attenuate. You have a, still have a signal. It's weaker now. Is closer to the background noise. Okay, um, let me try to draw it out for you. Um, we have background noise looking like this. Background noise. Your signal here is pretty big. After a while, it is a bit smaller. So it, the ratio is smaller, you know? The ratio of the blue to the orange. Signal to noise. So this signal. Background noise. BG noise. Yeah, that's also what I mean. Okay, if you're not convinced, I will show you the mathematical method. But let me just write the answer first. Chill. Okay, 38 dB. Here's 38 dB, one mark here. And one mark if you know to add together. Miss, how you know to add? Nah, this is not a method. I mentioned it, ma. You can think backwards. Oh, what was the original SNR? Decrease by a certain amount. If you are not convinced, this part is for you. If, you're, if you don't want to see the math, you skip to the next section. But here we go. So, in blue color, miss, how do we know to add? Why add? Remember this um, thing we showed in the theory video earlier? When you want to find what is the, let's say, uh, what, what we want to find? Uh? Signal noise. Uh. Ah, the ratio. Okay, We are trying to find the ratio of input power to noise power at the receiver. In other words, you are trying to find what is... 10 log input of what? Uh, ratio of input to ratio of noise at the receiver. And this whole thing is the dB. Lah. How many dB? This will be your 38 dB. And we don't have enough information to calculate this straight away, but you can do a bit of math and say, oh, I want to find P in over P noise. I'm just going to put N. I can just multiply this fraction i put n here okay p in over p n and in between i put the receiver p r p r what is p r p r is on this side oh, receiver power we know the noise power are uh, 9.2 mi milliwatt we don't know the receiver power so you can write this as, like that but the nice thing about log why we use log is so that when there are multiplication you can split it up into two different logs so we can say now that 10 log, the ratio of P in over P noise, which is what you're trying to find, is equal to 10 log P in over P R. And because they are multiplied, I just convert them to plus 10 log uh, P R receiver over noise. Okay. So what is given to us is, we know this one is our 25 dB. dB is already the ratio, right? 
Okay. Um, the other one we need to find. So this thing is our 13 dB. Eh, not 13. Eh, sorry, wrong. Ah, yeah, 13 dB. How we know 13? Because 13 is talking about attenuation. Attenuation of the beginning to the end. What's the difference? And you add together both, you get your original no? P in over P noise, which is your signal to noise ratio of 38 dB. That's why we can add. Okay, so that's the math part of it. La. Okay, la, you, you see, you write it down somewhere if you want to know. Okay, last part. Use your answer to determine the input power. Huh? We haven't found yet, meh? Oh no, we found signal to noise ratio. This is just a ratio, a log ratio of... What was the log ratio? Ah, 10 log P in over P noise. We only found this. That's all. We did not find anything else. So I'm going to write that down so we can remember what that is. This 38 dB is really 10, the ratio, 10 log P in over P noise. We haven't found P in yet. This is just a ratio. Okay, let's finish it up then. I, after I highlight this. Ratio. Okay, how to find P? We use our answer, lo? 38. Can ah? So we say at P. We can use the ratio where 38 dB equals to 10 log P in over P noise. Can use like that. Ah. Can. Okay. This noise, a reminder, is ratio of noise at the receiver. Ah. So the given value 9.2 mu, which is microwatts. Let's do finish up this calculation. Okay, subbing in everything, 38 equals to 10. LG means log 10. We use it interchangeably. P in, which is finally what we're trying to find, times 9.6? 9 9 9.2, sorry. 9.2 times 10, negative 6 watts. Mm, finally. Okay, to get rid of the log, you want to take out the P from, it's stuck inside the log. So you need to open up the log. But before that, move your 10 to the other side. Divide by 10. Then you have only log remaining. P in over 9.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Ah, very good. Okay. First things first, what's the power? 10. What's on the left side? 3.8. So 10 to the power of 3.8. What is on inside the log bracket? Power. So the ratio of power is there. 9.2 times 10. Negative 6. Your final value, you will get a power input of about 5.80 times 10 to the negative 2 watt. <laughs> 2 marks for this. So 1 mark for final answer, 1 mark if you plug in here. This is your ratio, ah. reminder. Ah. Ratio. All the dB is ratio between two points or between noise and signal. Also can. In actual exam, you don't have to show so much working. I'm doing this so that you can see, especially if you don't take maths, you know how to deal with the log examples. Okay, so I think that's all for this video. Hopefully that was helpful in understanding ratio and dB a little bit better. But I'll see you in the next few videos. We'll look at more examples.